Hey guys, welcome to the channel, welcome back to the channel, whichever is you today, and welcome to the final, the last but not least edition of RNJ's wonderful documentary series for Bandmade. Uh, you can notice a bit of a setup, a bit of a different setup here guys. Uh, I have a microphone, uh, the microphone I use for my voice acting. My pop filter is driving me nuts, which is why you see you're in a bit of a weird position. My microphone as well, I need a stand and I need one badly. Um, I, if you saw the setup literally that I'm doing right now, how, how this is happening, how this is all held up, I have no, I have no clue. But anyway, not to bore you with that. Now, I saw that this was three parts and asked you guys, shall I do this? Like, you know, uh, one, one part ago and then I'll do it in all parts. I decided to screw it. Let's do it in all parts. Uh, this epic feature film length documentary, um, which is all about Miku, just Miku, you know, and stuff like that. So... I'm guessing the reason for that is that, you know, she's incredibly important towards uh, Bandmaid's existence, is what I'm guessing. But anyway, this has been an absolute blast. Big up to RNJ for making such an amazing series. And um, yeah, let's check out part one. I have a big bottle of water. Breaking new game. By the way, guys, sorry for the levels on the mic are not too great. We are in Kumamoto, still, still a learning. city located in the Everything prefecture the with the same name on the island of Kyushu. This is where Kobato Miku was born a and few decades Japan. ago. Her parents were a remarried couple, and she has a half-brother who's 11 years older from her father's previous marriage. As you could imagine, she was a very active child, much to the dismay of her parents, who this struggled to her, keep like, an you know? eye on her, as she was the kind of child who snuck out of her house to play or run all around as soon as she was taken to large open spaces. She loved to play with boys at games like Chanbara, which is basically sword fighting for kids, or catch insects in the summer, but those little trips and games cost Miku a lot of bumps and bruises. Miku was introduced into music very early by her grandmother, who went to an Enka karaoke class. When she was around seven or eight, Miku fell in love with music and singing as she followed her grandmother to local public hall gatherings. At this time, Miku only knew Enka, so that's all she sang. The first song she learned was Jindo Monogatari by Yoshimi Tendo. <laughs> Her mother was worried that Miku would only be interested in Enka, so she asked her to listen to other musical genres and offered what her is a Enka, CD by the way, guys? of the idol Not band sure what Morning is. Musume. And so, with time, Miku came to experience and listen to more and more different kinds of music. In high school, Miku was in the broadcasting club. <laughs> of course she was. This is the club responsible for those announcements that you hear in the school from time to time, like morning or lunch break news. <laughs> Back then, Miku's friends were really into bands and took her to live performances of smaller amateur groups covering popular songs. Miku was not that interested in the bands, but this experience made her look into more bands to listen to. During her research, she came across Tokyo Jihen, a Japanese rock band formed around the popular singer Shina Ringo. <laughs> Miku was stunned by their sound and finally found the music that she wanted to do. It was also during this time that Miku's parents got divorced and her father totally disappeared from her life. 
From then on, she had to live with her grandmother. It was a hard time for her and her family, but she tried to find a proper high school and think about her future. No time to think about making music for a living, even though this idea was starting to grow in her mind. When she was at university, Miku missed a lot of classes because she was working part-time to earn enough money to participate in multiple auditions in Tokyo. The problem was, she never told her mother about all her travels to the big city. And the more Miku went to Tokyo, the more she wanted to live there. So, mm. in October 2010, on her birthday, so bucket list Miku presented her visit I Tokyo, want to live in house. Tokyo plan to her mother to try and reassure her. This plan was basically to find enough part-time work to pay for her life there, along with vocal training. Miku knew that living in a big city like Tokyo would cost a lot, so she took as many jobs as she could. At one point, she had three different jobs, leaving her with just a few hours of sleep per day. She hey, was willing guys, I, I, to do I fixed the sound a bit. I was very low. Sorry about that. One of her jobs was at a maid cafe in Kumamoto. This is the kind of job that fit her perfectly, as she was very interested in customer service, loved to talk to people, and loved the idea of wearing a cute outfit at work. This particular maid cafe only lasted six months, until December 31st, 2010. It's hard for this kind of business to last in local cities like Kumamoto because of the lack of new customers daily. With nothing holding her back in Kumamoto and enough money from all her hard work, Miku quit university and moved to Tokyo to start a new life pursuing her dream of becoming a singer. Boy, oh, band made in the back? Damn. Now that she was living in Tokyo, Miku easily found a part-time job as she had already a lot of experience from her life in Kumamoto. Miku discovered the concept of maid cafe in her hometown, so she thought that it would be a good idea to try and work in a maid cafe in Akihabara, the place where maid cafes are the most popular in Japan. She started to work at the At Home Cafe in May 2011 under the name Kimawari which means sunflower. This maid cafe was way bigger than the one in Kumamoto, and this one held performances and events where Miku could work on her singing regularly. It was a great experience for her, as she learned a lot about human relations, handling different types of people, and even calming down angry customers arguing with each other. After all, Miku wanted to do everything to make everyone happy. She also learned a lot from overseas customers and how they perceive maid cafes as a part of the Japanese culture. Miku worked almost a year for At Home Cafe but quit in January 2012. She had a ceremony celebrating her time working there and there was a lot of messages from regulars and overseas customers. She even wrote a moving message on the blog of the maid cafe. <laughs> ま、<笑> あ、書き損ねたんですか。スーツで来てくれたご主人様、ありがとうございました。私得でした。あと素敵なお花もありがとう。あとチェキの受け取りがまだの方、なるべく早くお絵描きしてドンキに持っていきますのでご日ドンキ
ハット銃だった私が全く秋葉原に行かなくなるなんて到底無理な話なのできっとまたお会いすることもあるかもしれませんもしまたどこかで私を見かけたらよろしくお願いします私にとってこれからがスタートだと思ってますみんながくれた気持ちを胸に頑張っていきたいと思いますさよならはしないですありがとうございました頑張りますひまわり The reason why she left was because she'd won the Super Idol audition on December 9th, 2011 This competition started in the summer of 2011 with 2,600 applicants Their goal was to create a three-member idol band with the votes of the fans. The Super Idol audition was also broadcast on MXTV on December 30th, 2011. のなんだろう未熟なところとかいっぱいあると思うんですけど一緒に応援していただけたらなと思います私は熊本から出てきたんですけどすごい親にもいい報告ができてとアルバイト先の,このメイドさんをしてるんですけど常連さんも見に来てくれていい報告ができることがすごくすごく嬉しいですこれから頑張っていきますありがとうございました This contest allowed Miku to join an underground idol band, or Chika Idol in Japanese, named Lil Kuman three months later, in March 2012. An underground idol band works with a minor label and will only perform in very small areas or events. It's well known that very few underground idol bands can become bigger and join a major label, so the chances for Lil Kuman to get bigger were really small. No pun intended. The name of the band came from the very short height of the three members, <laughs> and that the birth flower of December 9th, when the result of the audition was announced, was Kuman. Lil Kuman was active until April 13th, 2013, when they announced they had disbanded during a one man concert in Shinjuku Orebako due to Miku and another member quitting the band. About a month after the release of the third single called Super Trooper, And their first one man concert in the same venue. In the end, Lil Kuman released three singles and performed about a hundred shows during a year of activities. In an interview, Miku confirmed that it was not her thing love for to debut, sing yeah. cute idol songs. She didn't hate it, but it was too different from the music she wanted to sing. <laughs> Back to square one for Miku, who decided to send her resume to Platinum Passport, explaining the kind of music she wanted to do. The company reached back to Miku and scheduled a meeting to talk about her project. Let's imagine an abbreviated form of this conversation. オーディションに受かってアイドルグループで活動していたんですがアイドルではなく歌手になりたくて1年ほどで辞めさせていただきました自分のやりたい音楽性とは違うなって気づいたんですバンドとかには興味ないのバンドは好きだし東京事変さんにも憧れています、うん、それに可愛い音楽よりもかっこいい音楽がやりたいですコバトはいろいろなバンドを調べて聞いているときに東京事変に出会って恋に落ちたバンドメイド日本のエピソードで群青日和が人生を変えたとまで言っているこの瞬間からコバトはかっこいい音楽のバンドを聴くようになり、awesome. バンドを組むという気がつかないように頭に浮かぶようになる、well. like、もしこの曲がなかったらコバトはバンドを組むことなど思いつかずバンドメイドは存在すらしなかっただろうあでもメイドも好きです
メイドとバンドを合わせたら面白いね。じゃあ混ぜちゃいましょう。<笑> On May 29th, 2013, Platinum Passport posted an audition announcement for anyone who wanted to join a new outfit. We've seen this in the,、uh, the other, other episodes. They also presented the first version of Bandmade's logo. In this post, it was specified. They were looking for women between the ages of 15 and 24 who can play guitar, bass, drums, and keyboards while wearing a maid outfit. They also clarified that the applicants must not be currently under contract with a production company or record label and、Makes、must、sense. not be planning to debut as a professional. Miku was actively looking for potential members herself and found a young musician posting guitar covers on YouTube. And Nico Nico. The name of this guitarist was Kanabi. Instant two thumbs, as always. Miku contacted Kanami through、oh. the talent agency to present her project. That show looks great. Kanami was pretty excited to join Bandmaid, and the maid outfit was definitely not an issue for her. The next one、mm. was Akane on drums. And with that,、oh, Akane asked Misa to join her new band. ってなってたので、その時私あの専門学校音楽の専門学校行ってたんですけど、で一緒の学校だったベースのミサを誘って。Misa's band had just ended their activity, so the timing was perfect for her as she wanted to continue playing bass. Bandmade, originally consisting of four members, was ready for its debut. They started rehearsals, but after about a month, felt that something wasn't quite right. Miku's voice alone didn't fit with this kind of music. And she didn't want to relive what happened with Little Kumin. So the idea of bringing in another vocalist to contrast with <laughs> Miku's <laughs> voice was raised. A new audition was conducted, inviting everyone managed by the agency who could fit with this project. Bandmade members and management found the profile of a recently scouted young singer to whom they proposed to audition. She was a model. Dancer, singer, who came to Tokyo to realize her dream of becoming a professional singer. And her name was Psyche. I love how much many band make songs I don't know yet. I love it. With their newfound experience gained while recruiting the other members, The management knew that they shouldn't talk about the main outfit to Psyche if they wanted her to come to the audition. <laughs> so, they didn't. How did you feel about the maid? 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 かわいい服なんだけどって言われて、うん、ちょっとかわいい服でかっこいい曲のバンドをやるんだけど,、うんだけどね、曲だけ聴いてたんであじゃあまあやってみたいですかねみたいな感じでなんで。A very nice speaking voice, like it, <laughs> which makes sense, you know, with how g r e a t singing. Apron. 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 And this band was called. Dominate, you say? Bandmade. Bandmade didn't waste any time after finding enough members, as they started to perform live on July 24th. 2013, before Psyche even joined the band at Otsuka Deepa in Tokyo. 
They continued for two more shows before opening for Passport and Silent Siren on October 22, 2013 at Shibuya AX with their complete lineup. This was Bandmaid's first live. <laughs> This venue could hold 1,500 people, so it was a great opportunity for our newly formed band. Bandmate started to be more active on Twitter on July 19, 2013, to promote concerts and news about the band. It's a great Their logo, YouTube by the way. channel really had good. been created on October 22, 2013, and slowly grew over the years. Bandmade also opened an Amiblo blog that was deleted in 2016 to use the official website that we know today even though it looked quite different from its current design. The management did a great job regarding the band's promotion in social media, but Bandmade had trouble standing out and reaching more people. During the first two years, most of their concerts were empty. They struggled to build their own fan base, and the future of the band was very uncertain. Bandmade tried to participate in Battle of the Bands with some other idol bands, but very few people from the audience were actually there for them. So they tried everything to expand their fan base. They promoted mm -hmm. their merch every time they could. They took photos and thanked fans for coming to see them. Miku worked in a noodle cafe in Akihabara until 2016, and she also sold tickets by hand. The noodle cafe was a service operated by Platinum Passport, where you buy a cup of noodles and you can choose which idol will pour hot water into the cup. Then, you will have around three minutes to talk with her until the noodles are ready. Until the first one-man show in Shibuya Milky Way, Misa was very unsure about her future in Bandmade and talked to the management about quitting. And for this particular concert, the management booked a venue and asked the members to invite at least 100 people. In the end, they managed to get around 50 of their friends and acquaintances in the front row. It was truly a dark time for Bandmade. It was also around that time that they released the MV of Thrill from their first hmm. single, I to Jonetsu no Matadoru. Again, oh my god, like instant guys. It is it's crazy. Every time. The song released in November 2014 was different from what they usually do, and even very different from the main song of this single. Oh! Wow, I would have thought Thrill was the, you know, the main one. Very different, this, Thrill but still driving. was a success on YouTube and was very well received during concerts. A few months later, on April 5th, 2015, Thrill was uploaded on a Facebook page called J-Rock Radio. This page introduced music from Japan like Visual K or metal bands to people from overseas, and the video gathered more than one million views in four days. You know, nice. in comparison, it took 17 days for the music video of Unleashed to hit 1 million views, and that was the fastest any Bandmade video grew. The response of Bandmade social media from overseas fans was huge. This so music huge video looked great. that they were afraid that their Twitter I'll account had been idea. hacked. They also opened their Facebook page on April 9th, 2015, following the success of Thrill. It literally saved Bandmade as they later wow, learned that, that management was about to end their contract and that this single was going to be their last. It was also the shock band made needed to find their own path and start their world domination. From this moment, the band committed to make harder songs and one and a half years later, they played their first concert overseas in Mexico. So thrill was... 
it, well, I'm guessing one of the most important bandmate songs there's been, possibly the most important, in some ways, you know what I mean? It wasn't the main single, that's crazy. みなさんこんにちはミカです今日はスペシャルゲストをご紹介しますレディットでアクティブに活動していてインタビューから MC まで数多くの翻訳をしてきた人ですみなさんきっとご存知の人ですが声は聞いたことがないと思いますそれではご紹介いたします T シンジさんですはじめまして T シンジです私がもともと聴いていた音楽はファンクロックやファンクなどでハードロックやメタルについてはほとんど知りませんでした2019年11月に以前から友人に勧められていたベビーメタの曲を YouTube でいくつか聴いたらサイドバーにバンドメイドのスリルが現れましたそのサムネイルを見た瞬間これはかっこいいに違いないと直感しました音を聞く前からギャップのコンセプトが伝わったんです実際にスリルを聴いて途中までは悪くないなくらいに思っていたらミサさんのベースソロでやられました次にダイスを聴いてミサさんのベースに完全に心を奪われました私のようなファンクロックファンにとってミサさんのファンキーなベースは耐えられないので、yeah, I mean, you know. uh, それからバンドメイドの MV を一気に見て1週間後にはもう CD を注文してライブの予定をチェックしていましたちょうどその時は東京近辺でライブがなく次のライブはツアーファイナルのラインキューブ渋谷だったのですぐにチケットを買いましたまた歌詞を見ながら聴くうちに小鳩さんの歌詞の素晴らしさに気づき小鳩さんの大ファンになりました小鳩さんの歌詞は内容もいいですが何よりも音がいいんです日本の曲では英語がよく使われますが同じメロディーに英語と日本語を当てるのはかなり難しいです Honestly, the, the, the thing is just weird stage, そして日本語で母音を落として平音節を作るテクニックが素晴らしいです、well, ここを8音節で歌っていますが元の日本語は15音節あります同じ年の12月、レディットを見つけてインタビューの英訳があるのを知りましたが、未訳のインタビューもまだまだたくさんありました。自分で英訳したいと思いましたが、私は英語ネイティブではないし、当時は音楽用語も詳しくなかったので、無謀ではないかと思いました。でも、小鳩さんが背中を押してくれたんです。もし小畑さんが私の立場だったらやれることをやるだろう自分の想像さえ超えていくだろうと思ったんですなのでもし私の翻訳が役に立ったなら私ではなく私に勇気をくれた小畑さんに感謝してくださいバンドメイドには人生を変える力がありますそうですよね T シンジさんどうもありがとうございましたそしてバンドメイドさん小鳩さん多くの人の人生を素晴らしいものにしてくださりありがとうございますシンジさんのディスコード have I? I feel like I have a recognition うわもう三十分近く経っちゃいましたここでちょっとお休みにして動画の残りはまた来週見ることにしましょう。That, that quick, 次回は作詞家小鳩さんのお話からしようと思います。ではまた次回。バイバーイ。
Okay, guys, now I'm going to part two straight away. Um, first off, let me just say I completely understand why. I don't know if RNJ released Miku's last, but it makes sense because obviously she's... I mean, the band w obviously wouldn't have happened without her. Um, but also the fact of this feels like Miku's documentary, but also band made as a whole in some way already, just after part one. But anyway, let's check out part two. After its formation, Bandmade consisted of five members, and the only guitarist was Konami. At this time, Bandmade wasn't really yeah, a hard rock band, but it was something that all the members wanted to move I didn't even clock towards. that, like, Miku hasn't got it a guitar It was then there. decided that the addition of another guitar would help them achieve this vision. So, they had two options. Recruiting a guitarist or having a remaining member learn to play a new instrument. They knew they didn't want another member, so it was up to Saiki or Miku to fill this role. Oh. As expected, Saiki refused, so Miku took responsibility as the founder of the band to learn to play guitar. At the beginning, Miku's guitar was little more than an ornament to make the pigeon look cool rather than an instrument <laughs> to play on stage. Miku had a lot to learn and not much time to practice, so she used to play some notes here and there without having a real impact on the song. There are even some songs where she didn't even hold her guitar. So like with early bandmate stuff, guys, very curious how the sound might be then, the fact that, you know, that there's no rhythm guitar there. Miku's first guitar was a Rickenbacker 620 that she used for practice and for concerts. She chose this guitar for its looks as she didn't have any other knowledge of guitars <laughs> back then. Miku never thought about playing guitar like Misa, never thought about playing bass, but contrary to Misa, who fell in love with her instrument, Miku didn't like playing guitar that much. As she practiced, her fingers hurt, and she was asked to play more and more, increasing this pain and the blisters. Not a great start for our pigeon and her guitar. As the years have passed by, bandmade songs have been getting more and more intense, Miku now had enough experience as a guitarist to notice that she needed a new guitar to match with this new kind of music. Fortunately, she joined Konami, who was invited to visit the Zomitis factory by Kanda Shokai from Kanda Shokai Corporation, the company that owns Greco guitars and Zomitis guitars. During this visit, Miku fell in love with the Zomitis A24MF for its looks and its heavy sound, so she asked if she could try this model. Since then, she's never stopped using Zemitis guitars. I thought I recognized that. I love the guys. I can't song tell after song, watch that video. Miku was getting more <laughs> guitar parts to play, and when she began to feel under pressure, the other members cared enough about Miku to tell her that it was okay to put it down if she wasn't sure that she wanted to continue playing guitar. And even though she did think about quitting the guitar, Miku didn't want to bring an additional member to bandmate, so she just mm. kept practicing to match the level required by these new songs. We know how much of a hard worker Miku is, so there was no way that she was going to give up. Also, with more songs with different tunings and more concerts to perform, Miku needed more guitars, so she added other Zemitis guitars to her collection, like the Zemitis CS24MF, Aces and Eights. Miku added a lot of guitars over the years, electric and acoustic, 
and almost all of them are from Zemitis. And a special model was teased by Miku in early 2021 and confirmed a month later. A signature model named Flappy Pigeon. <laughs> I don't know how to the tower. Zemitis talked to Miku about making a custom guitar for her as a surprise present. She didn't believe them at first, thinking it was a joke. At first, only oh, the metal so nice. front design was planned to be customized, but Miku asked if she could also change the shape of the metal and that this model fits her current settings. As Miku seemed to know what she wanted to do with her signature model, Zemitis let her make any modifications she wanted to. She worked with a designer called Koji Takauchi, who helped her create this beautiful design. Gorgeous. Miku even used her handwriting for the logo at the center of the guitar. As expected, a lot of pigeons are visible everywhere on this design. Miku said that she chose this name with the thought of being able to fly around the world with her guitar. The Zemitis Flappy Pigeon was sold on March 9, 2021 with a beautiful case and a certificate of authenticity signed by Kobato Miku herself. About a month later, on April 16th, a Miku Kobato special exhibition was announced. The event took place in Ochanomizu Gaki Center from April 16th to May 5th I love custom and featured guitars, almost all Miku's guitars. Fans were able to check Miku's guitar collection and even buy a guitar or a Zemitis t-shirt. T. Shinji had the chance to visit this exhibition and shared some of his photos of the trip. Has Tinji met bandmate? Be awesome if he had. <laughs> oh, well, bless me again, guys. Oh, that's nice. Huh? I know I'm doing a lot of stank face to the background music. I very much enjoy it. To the documentary itself. The ADHD in me. Ah. <laughs> We actually have two guests. <laughs> yeah, we have two incredible guitars with us today. それでは、スペシャルゲストの2人と小畑さんのギタリストとしての進化についてお話ししましょう。こんにちは。お2人とも自己紹介していただけますか。Hey, this is Axe from the Axe Japan YouTube channel uh, from sunny Scotland. Hey. I've been playing guitar Fellow for Celt. about 26 years now. I'm a songwriter, a performer, and a teacher of, of guitar. The bandmade song that got me hooked on them was probably YOLO. This, yeah, this one, this was in the first part. This may be the next one I check out after this documentary, guys, when I do, you know, my weekly made videos. This might be the one. This is 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 the one. え、まあ、バンドメイドにとってコバトミックのたち位置っていうのはま、皆さんご存知だと思うんですけども、ま、ざっくり言うとま、バンド結成した張本人であり、ま、主な so I'm not actually too sure when Miku started playing guitar, uh, but I get the impression uh, that she hadn't been playing guitar for long uh, when the band started. Um, and you can kind of see that from uh, from early performances. 
、えー、彼女がギターを始めたのがバンドメイド結成というタイミングだと思うので、まあ、2013年ですかね、はいでまあ、ギター弾く人だと分かると思うんですけど、まあ、あの数年ぐらいで、まあ、人前でポロとして弾くっていうのはかなりまあメンタルが強靭じゃないと厳しいなというふうに思ってます。でまあ、それが、ねまあ、例えばまあギタリストにとってまあ簡単なフレーズだったりとかしてもさすがにちょっとこう人前でまあちょっと練習しただけでというのは厳しいのかなと思います。で、えー、2013年にギターを始めたとして、えー、まあその後1年後にはまあメイド・イン・ジャパンだったりその翌年にはえニュービギニングか。あまあ、スリルとかフリーザー収録されてるやつですね、まあ、あの辺がリリースされて、えー、翌年には、えー、ブランドニューメイド、えー、フリーダムとかアロンとか入ってるアルバムですね。Also, the way that these songs were written、uh, back in the early days,、uh, her purpose, Guitar Wives, was really just to back up、uh, Konami.、Uh, and a lot of the parts, guitar parts, especially in the first. Uh, first few releases were just single guitars, really. They really could have got away with just having the one guitar player、uh, in the early days. But I think because Miku is a songwriter and she was learning guitar, then why not have her just do backup for you know, the main parts of the songs? Obviously, she's singing as well, and you, know, you can tell if you go back and watch、like、early performances and stuff, there are quite a few mistakes、uh, on her part. But yeah, you can chalk that up to many things lack of experience. You know, obviously, singing and playing is, is not, easy, it's not the easiest thing in the world. I could、uh, imagine. It takes a lot of skill to do that. I could that. imagine doing that. So there are mistakes here and there. If you follow the, the band closely over the years,、uh, she has got so much better、uh, playing guitar. Uh, and also singing and playing guitar. And also, the confidence has grown a lot. Especially the confidence, it really shows.、Um, she's a lot more comfortable playing now and just letting loose. You can tell that she's not putting as much thought into it as she was before because it's all become second nature now to her. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a guitar player. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a guitar player. I'm not sure if っていうともうほぼ初心者と変わらない状態ですよね。まあ、その状態でまあ作詞やってたりとかプロモーションもやったりとか、うん、まあ編曲だったりとかアレンジですねとかやってる中で、まあ、あまり練習の時間が取れないって考えると、まあ、通常のまあ一般の方がギターをやる3年とはまあちょっと違うのかなっていうふうに感じるんですけど、まあ、あのその当初はまだ弾いてるフレーズをまあ簡単というか、えー、パワーコードだったりとか。まあ、あのほどほどテクニカルなことはやっていないなという印象ですけども、まあ、あのバンドされる方はまあ分かってらっしゃると思うんですけど、まあ、そういったサウンドがあって初めてバンドに厚みが出るので、えー、必要必要というところでいうと、まあ、十分必要なポジションではあるのかなと思います。Obviously, she has、uh, a great mentor in the band Konami. It would be amazing to have someone like that in the band to actually teach you.、Uh, but her progress、um, has just come through, through practice. And when you're in a touring band, that's all you're doing. You know, you're playing the same stuff every night, and that's what practice is、yeah. it's just repetition. Very true. So, you know, being on the road、uh, all the time, she's playing constantly. So, yeah, she's bound to improve, and that's exactly what's happened. I think also her improvement on guitar has led to the evolution of the band.、Uh, it's actually a very important thing that's happened、um, during their career. I think Konami was a bit limited in terms of writing in the early days because yeah, Misa's she bass in the back. was basically only writing one guitar part. で翌年にはまあワールドドミネーションという流れになっていきますけど、まあ、この段階でギター歴が、えー、5年、えー、ですよねで結構 BPM が速くなってきて,て I, honest,、えー、その中でもスライドだったり、まあ、オクターブだったりとかっていうのがあるので、まあ、正直、えー、ギター歴5年でここまで弾けるっていうのは相当すごいなというふうに個人的には思いますでえー、ここから劇的に変わるんですけども2019年の「カン」からのリリースから「チョーキング」とかの「タウンブレイス」とか
I'm so excited to get back to that song and stuff. But it's also a very accent on the song. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. コアトパートに耳を傾けていただけたらなと思うんですけど、結構あの難しいことをやっています。あのこの歴で考えると相当ハードル高いことをやってるなと思います。で、えー、2021年ぐらいのまあギター歴8年かで、まあ、アンシンワールドですよね、えー。結構直近ですけども、アンシンワールドリリースして、でまあ、正直あのまあ自分も耳コピーしたりとかしてカバーするんですけど。アフターライフの B メロのバッキングとかすごいどぎも抜かれましたねあのあむずいって普通に思いましたそうです。Which is, which is really, really cool to see.、Uh, just to give you a quick example,、uh, if you take her solo from the onset instrumental,、uh, which is basically this. I love that bit. Just chords,、uh, we're in drop D, so you can basically bar. It's like one of the easiest things to do. Uh, to her solo in Cyan Akidori, where she's actually playing actual octaves in more of a solo environment, I guess. ね、She's actually doing stuff like that. That's just night and day from, you know, from a solo, like just a chord solo to actually doing octaves. And I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of albums that you will see her actually doing like some, some cool, like little lead stuff.、Uh, actual, maybe even some guitar dueling with Konami. It would be really awesome to see.、Mm. And speaking as a guitar teacher myself, I can only imagine how proud Konami is of Miku and how far she's come.、Uh, and you can see it when,、uh, when they're playing together live, whenever, whenever Miku is doing a part that's more complicated than what she's used to.、Um, and you can see the look of, you know, she's doing it on her face, which is,、uh, yeah, it's super nice to see. アンシンワールドのリズムギターを務めているのはまあ驚異的だなと思いますしで、まあ、本源の収録っていうのはまああの以前メンバーが言ってましたけど、まあ、あのミンチョが演奏しているっていうのでライブとちょっとこう音源っていうのは若干違うんですけども、まあ、それでもやっぱりこう歌いながら弾くっていうことがあるので多少簡略化されててもまあそれは仕方ないなと思いますし、まあ、それでも十分あの難しいフレーズ弾いてるなというふうに私自身は感じています。でえー、まあここ最近の曲なんかは特にそうですけどもうなんかもうメタリカなりの<笑>なんかゴリッゴリのバッティングをまあリズムキープしながらちゃんとこう観客に笑顔を見せつつステージングパフォーマンスをしつつ、えー、ちゃんとリズムキープしてるっていうのがすごいなと単純に思いますで彼女のそういったあの安定感あるバッティングがあるからまあ、ミンチョが結構自由なフレーズを奏でても、まあ、音が薄くならないというか結構ミンチョって単音フレーズだったりとかあ高音フレーズ弾いてることが意外と多いんですよねなので、えー、低音域中音域っていうのを、まああのーまあ、もちろん低音はあのベースがあったりとかするんですけども、えー、その間の中音域だったりとかっていうのをしっかりとこう小鳩が、まあ、埋めているというような感じで、まあ、バンド全体としてちゃんと本当にバランスが取れているなと。So, yeah, like I said, I think、uh, Bandmade's musical evolution actually has quite a lot to do with Miku's improvement on guitar, and、uh, you know, we can only 
just uh, look forward to seeing what comes next. You know, we might start seeing even more sort of complicated guitar arrangements uh, involving two guitars. So yeah, we just have that to look forward to, and yeah, we'll just continue being proud of uh, the progress that she's made. で、まあ、あんまりこうあの普段こうやってあのコアトニックのギターをどうだとかっていうのをあまりこう真剣に考えたことがなかったんですけど、まあ、今回こういう機会をもらったので、まあ、いい機会になったなと思います。まあ、あ
she looks for ways to actually see what she has in her head, like watching movies, reading books, or searching materials on the internet. As long as writing lyrics doesn't become a duty, but something she can do whenever she wants, Miku enjoys going through this process over and over to write new songs. Let's take, for example, Influencer that was released I'm of course listening to the voiceover guys, but the, the Miku solo was coming Saiki in then. and Akane for a theme that could match with the song Konami wrote. And as Miku That's has been on TikTok for quite that. a while, Psyche suggested to talk about women living on social media. The trend wow. of influencers That's on setting. social media grew a lot with the pandemic, so it was a great suggestion. Miku read a lot of interviews and analyzed the behavior of those influencers that inspired her for the lyrics, like having two accounts on Instagram, one secret where you post your daily life photos and talk to your friends, and a fake account where you post only good-looking pictures mm, to attract more followers. Very good. Miku also likes to employ words with multiple Because that's how I feel about social media, puns, to be honest, As guys. she did an influencer with the Japanese you know, English what's real and what's for the not. lyrics, chit-chat, so that's which awesome means that meaningless conversation that. in English, and chit-cha, which means narrow-minded in Japanese. Psyche is singing it closer to the Japanese word to make the pun even harder to find for the Japanese audience. For songs tied to an existing media like openings or endings, if I was a pause or react, the guys are very involved with the material that will be linked to the song. Last year, she released a song called Did With I just you hear Psyche for her side project, Klupo. This song anyway, back to is it. the end title for the anime Smile of the Arsnotoria. That was unexpected. And to write the Another lyrics, song to check out. Miku read the novels and played the game from the same license to be in sync with the storyline. Oh, so driven, dude. That's what I call true commitment. Yeah. Committed. Some yeah. songs are even written while bandmaids touring, like Spirit or Carry On Living, which was born in a cafe in Berlin. Or more recently, Memorable, which was written during the U.S. tour, along with the filming of a music video shot in California. I feel There is also one song that was written especially for the fans, as a gift from Bandmate, and planned for the Nippon Budokan concert that was cancelled due to COVID. Is this it made it is? a lot of us maniacs cry with its powerful lyrics that gave us hope when we were all having a hard time during the pandemic. And this song was about us. Now, the very astute of that song. Song. might have noticed that Miku has a special persona during interviews or when she's on stage. What's with the pigeon? I still don't know the pigeon, guys. Is it going to get explained? And not only when she's dressed with her Why, she's the costume, pigeon? this habit is so imbued in her head that this verbal tick is present in her private life, too. <laughs> 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 I 
こういう収録とか終わって帰りますってなった時にじゃコンビニ寄ろうとかで寄るとでレジ行くじゃないですか。で、ありがとうございます、ポーとか、<笑>レシートご利用になりますか、<笑>あ、お願いします、ポーみたいなのを出ちゃってて。でも、出てることも、言わないとわからないみたいなので、うん、はっ,って、自分でびっくりしてるんですよ。そう、自分でびっくりするんだと、<笑>相手の顔を見て、<笑>えみたいな。but、she wasn't always like this。during the first years of bandmate。she didn't have this。Funny pigeon persona and talk more normally, but always with a great energy. ということで、はじめましての方が今日は多いみたいなので、改めまして、バンドメイドと申します。えー、私たちバンドメイドは先ほど紹介していただきましたように、メイドの服を着てバンドをやってる、そのまんまですね。なので、バンド、バンドのメイド、バンドメイドと言います。あのちなみにロゴは R がついてるので R 忘れないようにしてください<笑>、はい、私たちバンドメイドはですねえ皆様のことをあなたもあなたもあなたもあなたもご主人様お嬢様として呼んでおります Once you get used to Miku talking now listening to her not saying po feels very weird even though not everyone likes this side of her under bandmaid's previous manager She tried to bring her persona but was quickly discouraged to continue. やめてくれって恥ずかしいからやめてくれって<笑>あのマネージャーさんも今は違うマネージャーさんに変わったんですけどでもその前のマネージャーさんの時は、うん、小畑さん本当にちゃんとしてくださいって言われて本当にやめてくださいって怒られて<笑>あ気をつけますぽって言って頑張ってこうちゃんとしなきゃと思って済ましてたんですぽでもマネージャー変わった時に今がチャンスだと思ってちょっと言ってたら意外とそっちがこう返してくれたのでもっとやっていこうと思ってあ自由に言えるっぽと思って<笑> so, you may ask, why po? いい質問ですね私も気になります小鳩さん説明していただけませんか小鳩ミクと先ほど自己紹介しましたがっぽ<笑>小鳩ミクの小鳩は小さい鳩にミクなので、うん、私小さい鳩なんですっぽここは皆さん飲み込んでください<笑>すっとすっと飲み込んでくださいちょっと苦いもの飲み込むみたいな気持ちで飲み込んでいただいて、うんはい、なので鳩なのでポーって語尾についたりくるポーって泣いたりしますっぽ、うん、解決っぽ解決<笑>きっと<笑>受け入れてくれるはずなので受け入れていただかないと多分耳障りが大変なことになりますっぽなるほど説明ありがとうございましたナレーターさん続けてくださいポーを in the discards it all makes sense Miku is actually using what is called in Japanese Kiara Gobi a common technique used in anime to make fictional characters more memorable and distinctive like the use of the onomatopoeia Nya By cat like characters at the end of their phrases. Except that Miku is a pigeon. <laughs> so she uses the word po. It's been years since she became the small pigeon that we know today. Always full of energy and happiness with her cute and funny persona. And when she is on stage during MCs, Miku becomes the funniest comedian for a few minutes. I bet she's amazing、joy. with the crowd. <laughs>
頑張れ小畑ここは絶不東京だけど小畑の気持ちは大丈夫みんな優しいみんな優しいきっときっと次こそのメンバーも戻ってきてくれるはず<笑>きっときっとねきっとねもっともっともっとクラップをしてじゃあメンバーをお願いしますの気持ちで一緒に小畑もクラップするのでどうぞどうぞご協力よろしくお願いしますパークラップしたちょっと疲れちゃいましたでも小鳩さんの MC はいつも面白くて大好きですもっと見れますか All right, but just a little bit. We have a lot of work for the next part. え、次の動画は何から始まるんですか、uh, Let me check. Oh, おまじないタイムおまじないタイム大好き楽しみ残りは来週にしましょう次回は必ず最後まで見ますでは皆さん良い一日を日曜日にお会いしましょう Right, guys,、uh, let me just prepare part three. I'm gonna have to ch- change the battery in a moment so there will be like a random jump cut.、Uh, but let me just say first off,、uh, I'll, I'll hold most of my thoughts until the end of the video and everything like that. But before I forget,、um, I'll throw it to you guys in the comments, right? Because of course, I will be checking, go back to checking songs out and everything like that. And it, it'll be a music video, I think, next time.、Uh, and I believe the three songs that really got my attention there were YOLO. Daydreaming Influencer. So let me know in the comments which I should check out first. Because <laughs> obviously I'm going to get to all of them. Let me change my battery. Okay, part three. Breaking new game. <laughs> That's right. Today, we are talking about Omagini time, or magic spell time in English, which comes from the maid cafe. Of course. When you order drinks or food in a maid cafe, the maid will say, Moi, Moi, Kyun, while making a heart symbol with both hands to cast a spell over your food and drink and make it even more delicious. One of the more popular foods in a maid cafe is an amu rice, complete. With a cute illustration drawn by the maid with ketchup. Miku actually did one in the music video of Don't You Tell Me, but it, it didn't last very long. As she worked for some time in two different maid cafes, Miku is using all her experience and has adopted it to the concert audience. Even though the structure is, um, well, <laughs> let's just say you will never experience the same o m a j i n a i time twice with Miku. She has a real talent for improvisation and uses it to engage with the audience. During o m a j i n a i time, the other members are totally free to hang around. Sometimes they just play together. Are you ready for one? Yeah! Misa, have like fun. drinking the whiskey flask in the back.
size. <laughs> no, the horror. She is so dirty. <laughs> Look for trouble. Or try to avoid trouble. There was even a time when each member took a turn at the drums. <laughs> Not easy to do a double bass pedal like that. <laughs> but most of the time, it goes like this. No oh, psyche. On the third part is me magic third part. Yes. Repeat words. I say moi moi. You say. Moi moi. I say you you. You say. Miku crying because the masters and princesses didn't make enough noise. Wow! No, 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 I want bigger and bigger boys! Repeat words again. Moe, moe! Moe, And po. You get the picture. Hell of a character, fair play. Depending on the stage, Miku walks a lot during her Omajanai time, but she never runs out of energy. <laughs> the security guard in the front. She even left the stage once to go off into the middle of the crowd for one of her funniest moments. <laughs> Literally shorter than everybody in the audience, that's brilliant. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the pandemic, Fanmaid was not able to perform live for a long time, but they found a solution. Online Okujis. Their first online concert this was, was performed uh, on July 23rd, 2020, concert, right? at Harabutai in Tokyo. And even though there was no audience in the venue, every member had a lot of fun. So they continued to stream live concerts five more times between 2020 and 2021. Of course, Omajinai time was shorter, but Miku did the call and response <laughs> with the viewers while looking at the camera, which was quite funny. <laughs> and I'm sure that a lot of you actually cheered at your screen like you were there. Proof that even a pandemic can't stop Miku from performing her magic spell time. In the end, Omajine time is a special moment between Miku and the audience, where she is giving the best of herself, whether the audience is there or not. And you can't help but smile with pure happiness and joy during these few minutes of fun interactions with her. I agree. Miku's Omajine time is now a part of Bandmaid and something to look forward to when you attend a Bandmaid serving in the future. Whether you're a fan of it or not, you can't deny that Miku is an incredible entertainer and she is great at bonding with the crowd. And her Omajine time is something that I believe only she 
can do. Yeah, this is the back of the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I literally quite love it. I need to see him live, dude. I do, I do, I do, I do. Next time, UK band made a promise. I hope there is a next time. すごい可愛い子が来たなって思って。でも中身はなかなかおじさんだったりするので。中身おじさんなの、プルポは。プルポおじさん。どういうところが楽屋で酒とかずっと食べるんです。どこが鳩やねん。どこが鳩やねん。
Or is that, is there more going on there? Go shoo shoo sama desu. Po? Miku is also a huge fan of Miffy, a fictional rabbit created in the Netherlands in 1955. A lot of people assume that Miffy is a Japanese brand, as it resembled Sanrio's characters yeah. like Hello Kitty. But Hello Kitty actually was introduced for the first time 20 years after Miffy. Still, Miffy is very popular in Japan, with a lot of stores all over the country. Miku posted a lot of photos of her Miffy merchandise on Instagram over the years. We also know that Miku used to play video games, and we can assume that she continues in her free time. She even streamed live while she was playing PUBG Mobile in 2020. <laughs> of course. <laughs> never played PUBG, by the way, guys. I am a gamer, but、um, never played PUBG. What song is this in the back? She won? Eh? What's going on with that track? Do you remember when I told you that when she was little, Miku often came back home with a lot of bumps and bruises? Well, actually, it never stopped. I was going to say, Miku、so、had several injuries over her years with Bandmaid. Saiki talked quickly about this subject in the Gold Rush interview, and we can see that Miku's legs. Had a lot of bruises. In another interview, Miku explains that while she was doing some washing, a glass fell off, shattered at the sink, and a part of the broken glass hit her thigh. She had 10 stitches from that wound. We can actually see the look of her scar on this photo. Miku also Ooh,、wow. broke her ribs at least twice. One time during the pandemic, and one time during a tour a few years ago. And you know how energetic Miku is on stage. But despite the pain, she went through the performance without making anything worse. All the members often joke about Miku being cursed or having bad luck with all these incidents. Like this story when Miku was in a taxi and the driver got into a car accident. She also laughs about the fact that she hits walls and doors all the time, so. We can imagine that she's used to hitting everything around her. With everything that's happened and probably still、like、is happening to her, <laughs> we can say that Miku is a tough little pigeon. This thing has all these songs that sound incredible. Miku participated in several episodes of Japan in Motion. At first, Japan in Motion was just a series of videos introducing different parts of Japan. Until TSS TV worked with No Life, a French TV channel, to turn it into a TV show. This project started in 2009, featuring foreign personalities discovering different places all over the country with a dedicated guide. After three seasons, it featured only Japanese personalities like Paspo and Kiari Pamu Pamu. Japan in Motion. Uploaded the episodes God, in Japanese this, on their、wow. YouTube channel,、oh, and、Japan. they were dubbed in French for No Life until 2018, when it switched to the channel J1. During those episodes, we follow Miku while she's discovering different places with their restaurants, shops, activities,、She'd、and be their a, beautiful. I bet she's great. From a neighborhood in Tokyo to the surroundings of Mount Fuji, and it worked pretty well when she was on the show. As the three most viewed videos from the YouTube channel feature Miku. Oh, sweet. While walking in Kichijoji, a neighborhood in the city of Musashino in western Tokyo, 
Miku went to a shooting bar and tried different weapons. I mean, she she won PUBG. Some of us got a crossover, right? That she is shooting with airsoft guns and not real ones. In Japan, <laughs> firearms are very rare among the population, and the law is Good. very strict about firearms. Good. A license is needed to own a weapon, and few dare to try to own a license. Mm. But it's pretty funny to see someone in a maid outfit <laughs> shooting with big guns. He's like natural comedian, as we said. Now, this might sound odd, but Bandmaid takes April Fool's Day very seriously. On April 1st, 2018, Bandmaid announced that they were breaking up to create a new band <laughs> called Band Michael. We don't, we don't talk Under about Band Michael. Under names Mako. and looks, the members of we Band Michael mixed hard rock and Michael style spirit. We don't talk about the rivals. Is or NJ, what are you doing? Geisha in Kyoto. I mean, I love Their that song, but what are we doing? consist of performing songs, dances, and playing the shamisen or other traditional Japanese instruments for visitors during special events. Band Maiko released the MV of I've a song that called a lot of times Secret well. Maiko Lips. Sorry, Bandmate. A Maiko adaptation from the Bandmate song Secret My Lips, using a dialect from Kyoto. I think I prefer this version as well. Sorry, Bandmate. The next year, Band Maiko released a mini album with seven songs adapted from Band Made, but also with one original There's more? song called Gyon Cho along with a new MV. I thought it was just the Super Mike Michael Lex. Oh my Two years God. later, I can't believe Miku this announced a solo project Sorry, called Klupo with the digital release of a single named Peace and Love. This time, they took the joke pretty far as Klupo came with an official website, an online oh, wow. shop, a YouTube channel, accounts on Twitter and Instagram, <coughs> and a spot on Pony Canyon's website. Wow. This project creates a new music genre called Hippie Popo Hippie and reinterprets Popo. the good old 70s music in a lovely <coughs> and peaceful way. With Klupo, Miku goes from a black and white maid outfit to a very colorful hippie long dress. <coughs> Her goal is the opposite of bandmaid, who want to dominate the world, as Klupo is aiming for world peace. <laughs> Klupo released the music video of Peace and Love on April 1st, 2021, to follow with a new song entitled Flapping Wings on August 10th, to celebrate the physical release of her single limited to 3,900 copies. Wings, she also appeared picky. in some interviews and radio shows over the year. After the physical release of Klupo's single, we wondered if she would come back or if it was just a one-time thing. And on January 5th, 2022, Klupo announced Hatiful, 
her first EP to be released on March 9th, which is Miku Day. Mika, can you explain what is Miku Day? Hi, Mochiron. Setsume Surto, Sujino san wa mi, kyu wa ku to yome masu yo ne. Dakara, san ga tsukokono ka wa Miku san nan desu. Thank you, Mika. We didn't have that much information about this EP, but a month later, the set list and an MV were announced. Hatiful will include Peace and Love, She's in some notes in the back there, by the way, damn. four brand new songs. Some insane Among those new songs, in the back. Pogo was chosen for a music video that was premiered on February 23rd, 2022. Wow, You get No, no, I don't. I think it's crazy. It's a fan might go, you know. The, the, the If rivals. you look closely at the set list, you may be able to notice something. Let's see. Peace and love. Pogo. Flapping wings. Hua hua. Voice. Superstar. Oh! Wakata. I get it. Peace and love. Yes, and Pogo for Akane because of the famous gorilla called Pogo. Mm. Fua Fua for Konami because, you know, that's Konami. That's best, uh, and finally, Superstar. The members. That's awesome. Could it be for bandmate? And what they aspire to become? Well, this has never been confirmed, but it's very interesting to imagine. I mean, flapping wings is pinched. Shows those song titles. We know that. A few months later, Klupo continued to surprise us with a new single called "With You," which was chosen as the ending theme for the anime "Smile of the Arsnatoria." And once again, a beautiful MV was released for this song. <laughs> Work ethic, drive, incredibly inspiring. Mm, she had some notes. She had some notes. Very nice. Over two years of activity, That sounds nice. Klupo released seven songs and four music videos, which is a lot considering how busy Miku is with Bandmade. And even though we don't have any news about Klupo for 2023, we can expect her to come back in the future. I want the So crazy to see her without, <laughs> you know. The maid headpieces. Well, this is now that. the time to end our journey with Miku. Yes, already. It's been a long journey, though. Well, She went through a lot. She had to live without a father very early in her life. Thankfully, Miku's mother and grandmother were here for her at that time. And Miku is so tough. Even though she sometimes talks about her dark thoughts, she always did her best to overcome them, move on with her life, and never give up. As soon as she knew that she wanted to become a singer, Miku did everything to reach her goal. Even if she sacrificed a lot of hours of sleep, she managed to earn enough to move to Tokyo and went from working as a maid to winning an idol contest. But this experience taught her that being an idol wasn't her thing. 
And when Miku finally had the opportunity to start her own project and create this miracle band, she had to find a way with the other members to become popular enough to pursue her dream. So she did what she does best, worked harder. Miku invited everyone she knew to the concerts, worked in a noodle cafe, sold tickets by hand, and promoted bandmade as much as possible. Of course, she wasn't alone, as all her bandmates helped to promote their band. But as the creator and public image of bandmade, she gave everything to avoid being disbanded. And all their efforts paid off when they chose to shoot the MV of Thrill instead of Aito Junetsu no Matadoru. This That's true. How different choice things might have been. Led to the birth of a fast-growing overseas God, that's fan so base true. and a huge boost that in decision. their popularity. This wow, big was crowds. the momentum Bandmade needed to reach the point where they could start to write that's their own songs thing. and become the hard-rocking band that we know today. Without Miku's hard work, her love for made cafes and this idea to mix cool music with cute outfits, Bandmade would never have existed. With the miraculous creation of this impossible band, our five favorite maids continue to pursue the same dream, living as professional musicians and dominating the world through music. As long as Bandmade will continue to play their music, we can say that they are making the world a better place. Don't you wanna say it? No, say that. No, they more eat. Don't I? Starting to get the feels a little bit there, guys. God, what, what what do I even say after after that? Um, you know, I I check out. Um, I like to check out a lot of guides and stuff on this channel, right? Uh, learning about the artists, the book, the groups, the bands, and stuff like that. And um, they're so well made, like all the time. There's so much work that goes into them. Um, granted, this was a documentary, not a guide, but it was a guide in some sense, of course. Um, but like, this is the best I've seen. Um, you know, uh, the way it's made, uh, all the different parts that come together with it, uh, all the people that are involved in each episode. Um, it's the best I've seen, and it will take some top. And that's nothing against the other guys I've checked out. Again, big love to those those creators as well that have done that. But Orange, I, I gotta tell you. Uh, not just saying it because this is on the bandmate video that this is the one. Um, and to be honest, the series was already amazing uh, even before we got to Miku. Um, but the the th the Miku three parter is in it itself is just mind blowing. Um, there's like so much information I took from that, um, and it was very inspiring. Like I said, I was I felt myself welling up at times, crying with laughter as well, of course. <laughs> because <laughs> she's hell of a character um but like her drive like i said her drive and uh and um how hard how 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 hard she works um and she just you know doesn't take no for an answer and everything like that I, i'm in awe of people like that um and it's a very inspiring it's very inspiring and yeah it's crazy like because i because i don't know why but i i assumed the the reason for the maid like concept and everything like that was um believe it or not i thought it was similar to and stick with me guys i'm gonna keep on top it don't worry um I th it's similar to for anybody that doesn't know like lady gaga i know i mentioned i mentioned gaga on a bandmate video the sacrilege uh, but stay, stick with me there is a point to it um lady gaga started off as like uh like a jazz pianist jazz singer an incredibly talented one at that right um, and when I say started, she was not Lady Gaga at the time. Uh, she, I, I can't remember her, her her real name off the top of my head and everything like that. But, you know, you see old videos of her before she became Lady Gaga. And there was so much talent there, right? 
Um, and it's almost like she needed to take the gimmick um, and the um, persona of Lady Gaga to get people to see the talent. That's what I thought it was for Bandmate as well, is that you had these amazing, amazingly talented artists and they needed something to grab people's attention. And then as soon as people's attention's grabbed, they see the talent, they hear the talent, they hear the music, and then they've got you. That's what I thought it was. I did not know the whole thing about Miku's history as a maid and everything like that. And I thought that was incredibly interesting. And I love the fact that she brought her own personal history to the identity of the group. Uh, because I got to say, I got to be honest, guys, and I know I'm not alone here. Um, excuse me, I know a lot of people have said this. But like, you see bandmaids at first, you haven't heard them or anything like that. And you're a bit like, at least for me, I was a bit like, oh, oh okay. Um, you know, and everything like that. What's this? And then the first note happens and you see them perform and you're like, why did I care that the fact that they're in made outfits? And you know, and it, and it's 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 weird. There's like an enjoyment to it now as well. Because uh, again, that's part of their identity. Um, but yeah, uh, Miku, God, I can't believe that her lack of experience with guitar, because this is the thing is that like in, in videos, like from now on and, um, on set, uh, the instrumentals, you know, they're, they're to me amazing showcases, uh, for who band made are as a band and their talents as musicians. And I never at one point ever checking out an instrumental when it gets to like Miku showing off the rhythm of guitar. Do I go, Oh, she's clearly the least experienced ever. Never me. I, I never get that. I always get that, oh my god, each one of these members is ridiculously talented. So that was a big shock. Huge shock uh, to me, to be totally honest. I loved hearing about the story of their rise. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, what, what was it called? The the magic time? <laughs> or the like, intermission she does and everything like that. Those are wonderful. Um, but yeah, I... I really enjoyed the series. It was a pleasure to watch and um, great job by everybody involved. Can't wait to listen to more music because the music I was hearing in the background, I was just like, oh, I'm looking forward to returning to, you know, checking out some lives and uh, some songs and everything like that, some music videos. And um, and it, uh, this is relevant, guys, but for anybody that doesn't know, uh, I recently revealed that I'm doing like a mini series uh, on my channel. And basically what it is, it's my top 50 songs of the year. Uh, and when I say the year, I don't mean 2023. I mean songs that I've checked out on this channel um, in any capacity in this first year that I've been doing YouTube. And uh, the first episode was just a few days ago. Uh, that was 50 to 41. Um, 41 to 30 will be up this weekend. Uh, and then it's going to be weekly throughout uh, December. Uh, the reason I say it on this video is that you may or may not see an appearance uh, from the maids at some point. Because what I should say is I've given myself a rule that I have a maximum of, maximum of up to two songs from an artist, band, or group. Can't have more. Uh, some t uh, Tragically, I've listened to 800, 900 songs, something like that, this year. So choosing 50 was tough. Um, let me tell you that. And... <laughs> make it even more restrictive for myself that only a maximum of up to two bro but like i said you may see the maids make an appearance uh in that series so it'd be sweet if you check it out put a lot of work into it and everything like that uh sorry to plug that guys but again it's relevant because you may see an appearance from these amazing from these amazing talented ladies uh on there but again big love to her nj the best uh D documentary guide that I've seen on on music I'd probably say to be totally honest with you that I've seen on YouTube absolutely mind-blowing I can't wait to like see an announcement of them live or something like that oh like in the UK I mean of course um and I will be jumping at the opportunity to see them live and apparently they do come to the UK quite often so fingers crossed because oh that'd be insane um and yeah, thank you guys so much for checking this all out with me as well. Um, the band made, the Mediacs, uh, have been so cool to me since the first video I checked out from Bandmade. And it's really cool to not only 
really enjoy the content that I'm checking out, uh, music-wise, of course, because I'm a lover of music. Uh, but to have the the f- the fandom of the content that I'm checking out be incredibly welcoming, oh, it's it's uh, it takes it to another level, to be totally honest with you. But anyway, that is that, guys. The documentary series is done. Like I said, what did I say earlier? It was uh, I'm either going to check out was it YOLO, Daydreaming, or Influencer. So let me know in the comments which of the three I should check out first. <laughs> Um, that will be next week then, uh, next weekend, because uh, I want to try and do a band made video every week uh, on the weekend, because uh, I just love checking them out so much. So let me know in the comments and uh, please subscribe because plenty of band made on the channel already in the band made reactions playlist, plenty more on the way. And again, keep an eye out for that top 50 series, Mediacs. Keep an eye out. So hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day, morning, afternoon, night, whenever you're watching this. Please take care. Much love.